Hey there, my gorgeous friends on the internet. Today we're gonna talk about blind people. Why are you laughing? Why are you laughing, son? Get your act together. This is a serious video about web accessibility. Did you know that 15% of the population self-identifies as having some form of disability? That's 1.3 million billion, sorry, that's 1.3 billion people. Imagine the sales you could have. <laughs> I'm joking, that's, that's a joke. Capitalism be like 1.3 build users, baby. So you're all familiar with HTML, right? It's just the content on your website. But ARIA, what is it? It's not like a separate programming language or anything. ARIA stands for uh, Accessible Rich Internet Applications. That's a, hope I got that right. Um, which is just a set of attributes that you can use in your HTML. One thing to note is that ARIA doesn't change an element's functionality or visual appearance. So in this case, I have a div here that says learn more. And if I add a roll of button to it, that tells all the screen readers to identify this as a button. However, on our screen, it doesn't actually change the div to a button. We can also use properties and states to make relationships between objects. So in this case, I have another div with a paragraph here, and I just added an aria described by property here that says more info, and that is related to this div down here. And the aria press state here just describes the current state of the toggle. So you can imagine it on a nav bar as well if you have that opened or closed. The thing is, most of the time, you don't even have to touch ARIA. You just have to use the correct elements. So in this case, we have a span here, and this deletes our posts, okay? And I added a roll of buttons here, but that doesn't really make any sense. We don't need to change the actual elements um, role where we could just use the actual button element. See, correct. You can also add aria hidden true, and that just hides it from the screen reader, so it wouldn't even identify it. So you wanna make sure you don't add this to any important interactive elements, like anchor tags and buttons and stuff like that. You can add it uh, to decorative elements, because I once did a bunch of divs with circles, and the screen reader would go circle, 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 but it was just decorative in the background. So add aria hidden to that. Let's see how we can make our interactive elements accessible. So for the anchor tag, we have a href and we have the text, which will be read perfectly fine. Next up, let's have a look at images. So if you have an anchor tag and you want to link an image, you can just add the alt on the image inside the anchor tag. To make an input accessible, you want to make sure you add a label to it and the attribute of four to create that relationship. In case your anchor tag has something like this where it just says read more, and that's not gonna be accessible. So what you can do instead, this is a time where you could add an aria label and just describe what you have in that post. Ever since HTML5 was introduced, we gained access to loads of new different elements. So the need for aria has been lessened because we have the appropriate HTML elements to use now. So now instead of creating a bunch of divs for everything, we can refactor this and add a header with a, an appropriate nav, a main section and a footer. So here, the main section represents the main content of your website. And then each section can represent a part of the page that just kind of puts information together that makes sense. So you could imagine a hero section, right? Your front page of the website, and then you might have a testimonial section. You also wanna make sure you only use one H1 per page on your website, all right? So in this case, we have Welcome to Vision Pro. And after this, maybe if I have another article here, let's say I have a section here with different articles, those would all have H2s, all right? So H2, H2, H2. And then from there on, if you have like a subheader again, you'd go to H3. You never wanna jump from H1 to H4 just because they have different styles. You might have instances where you wanna make an element focusable. So in this case, the span. By default, you cannot focus on it. However, we can add this tab index of zero. And doing this, as you can see, when we tab, the element focuses. Now, in most cases, most elements that are interactive, like buttons and inputs, have the tab index on by default, so they are focusable. But you might have also instances where you wanna get rid of it and make that element or that input unfocusable. And we can use that by adding a tab index index of minus one. If you want to test out the accessibility feature, you can head to settings and go over to accessibility tab and then head over to spoken content and turn on speak selection. Okay, you go in your HTML and you set your language and your Mr. Worldwide, your Pitbull, you just came out of the hotel room and you want to support English, Japan, Portuguese, Hungarian, like loads, right? 
that doesn't work. Okay, you can only have one here. And whatever you set here, that's how the screen screen reader is gonna read it out. So if I do hello there, right? So if I set this to Japanese here, the screen reader is gonna <laughs> it's still gonna read this content though, but with a Japanese accent. Uh, so just have one like that. And if you have some Japanese text, for example, here, all right, insert Japanese text, then you can just set it to this specific element, right? So you can just do that and that'll be fine. And if you want to find the country code, there's a large list on W3 schools, so you can just look them up right here. Also for your page title, did you know that typically search engines only display like the first 45 to 60 characters? So don't put like your name first like that and then say JavaScript course, right? Always do the important keywords first. So JavaScript course, and then you could have learn web development blah, 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 and then develop by it. Now, of course, there's a lot of more to accessibility than what we covered, such as, you know, color and contrast, keep that in mind as well, making your text very easy and readable. So in this case, this is quite hard because it's a black text on a quite dark background as well. So what we can do to improve that is, well, let's change the color to white first, and then we can maybe add the font weight and make it a tad bit bolder just to bring it out even more. So there we go. Now the contrast is much better and you have tools for this. So for example, I'm in Figma right here. I have a contrast checker here, so I'll just click on that. So now what I can do is just click on my text and as you can see, it passes all the tests. So I know that's perfectly fine now. And the way we have it before and we can see it live as soon as I go darker, boom, it fails. Now keep in mind because you might do on the web loads of things with animations where you might do something like lower an opacity on a button or something. So careful, if we lower this to like 80%, that's gonna fail our test. So you wanna also make sure that doesn't happen. Anyway, that's gonna be it for me. Thank you so much for watching this episode. Let me you know if you enjoy this new format. Uh, I'll give two links, shout outs, MDN developer Mozilla, always a great source for learning more about accessibility and web.dev. This is a fantastic source as well. All right, see ya.